If you've tried everything to achieve a better work-life balance, you read all the articles, you followed all the advice, and you still wonder if that true work-life balance is just for a few lucky ones, then this video is for you. Work-life balance in itself is quite a simple concept. Don't overdo it at work, have plenty of time to balance it out with your personal life and then you'll be happy. And that is until we realize that there are a few problems with that because often our time isn't our own. We have a nine to five job and we need the money. We have family to care for, we have responsibilities and even so, we don't have enough money to do exactly what we want to do. Plus, we are not a YouTube creator or an artist. We are regular people with regular jobs and a mortgage, and we don't have the same flexibility as those people. And then something else happened. Most of us stayed home for a full year and life ended at the door to the outside. And we ask ourselves, how can we have a work-life balance if life as we knew it had stopped? And isn't it fair to say that now that life resumes a little bit more normally, that we now should care for those relationships, those things that we missed out rather than go to work? It all starts with either or choices. We understand we've grown up with the belief that life consists of trade-offs. And the term work-life balance already suggests that there must be a trade-off between work and life. Even worse, work comes before life. So what choice do we have? And so we grow up in that knowledge and that belief that we have bills to pay, we have responsibilities to fulfill, and the only way to have true work-life balance is to make the most of that other part of life, the personal side, after you've done your work. Elon Musk talked about it in one of his videos and he says, look, if I am at home and I'm really happy in my home life, I also go happier to work. I'm far more productive. I'm far more efficient. And equally, if I have work that is truly fulfilling to me, I feel much happier when I come home. I bring all that energy back into my home life as well. But rather to start with that big age-old question, well, what is my purpose? What is my vision? What can I change in my life to make this work better? Start with the small stuff. Remember the things that maybe you've done throughout the pandemic. Have you enjoyed maybe going for a walk over lunchtime, going outside and gaining a little bit of energy? You started to play with your kids when otherwise you might have worked in an office. And in the evening when you put them to bed, maybe you now logged into your computer and did a little bit of more work and you felt happier with that. Which parts of your life, professionally or personally, give you energy. And when you find out which one it is, then you can form your work-life balance around the things that do give you energy. Let's say you have to be somewhere two miles down the road. You have choices you can make. You can surely walk down. Or you can take a little bit of money and buy a bus ticket and be there quicker. So, what has money actually bought you? It bought you time. You bought time back. When you go on holiday, you spend some money to gain time back for your life. So we realize that the true currency isn't US dollars or British pounds or Bitcoin. It is time. And yet we spend time far more carelessly than we spend money. See, with money, you always have an excuse because some other person has a lot more money than you have. But with time, we can't make that excuse because every one of us is given the same amount of time. Yet we very freely give our time away. We need to re-energize ourselves after depleting our energy when we were at work. So we spend some time lying down. We give our time to social media, flipping through the pages that show us how somebody else's life is far happier than ours. And ultimately, we start ruminating about our life choices and that can be very tiresome. So rather than continue doing that, we flip over and watch a Netflix movie. One thing that many successful people have in common is that they have a sense of control over their own destiny and their time. 
It's interesting to me that a lot of successful people don't talk by themselves about work-life balance. They're usually the one who are asked by others, how do you achieve so many things? How do you balance it all out in your personal life? But for them, it's not really that question. They make life choices. They make choices of how to spend their time. And you can do that as well. Take control back of some of your time. Not all of it, maybe 30 minutes. Maybe you can take 30 minutes of your time every single day to write or to create art, to do something that you find challenging. And maybe next month you can take an hour. Your brain starts to find ways to give you back control of your time. Maybe your company controls your schedule. I fly for an airline and it's scheduled flights. And yet I can still take control of my time back for the times when I have to wait, for the times when I'm in between flights. And I can decide for myself how I wish to spend that time. And if you take control of your time in that way, you're creating a work-life balance that works for you. But there is one question that you have to answer. You have to know how you want your life to look like, not how society expects it to look like, not how your friends and family expect you to live. There is a fear that I have though, that all that knowledge that we gained throughout the last year may be buried, may be forgotten once life starts to be normal again. We will go to the office, we will have our goals and objectives again, we have to pay bills, we have to pay our mortgage. And all the while we forgot what truly became important to us. So in order for work-life balance to work for you, know the difference between what you want in your life versus what society tells you or advertisement or your friends or your family. You have no idea how many people came to me over the last five years to tell me that they just can't believe I gave up my career in finance, all that money, that influence, that fame, that flexibility that I had. And yet I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to learn something new. I wanted to grow. But if I listened to society or my friends or what is accepted or makes financial sense, I would have never made any change to my life. And that is a scary thought because that's not what work-life balance is about. So what do you want? Let me know in the comment section below. I know that you can take control of your work-life balance. You can realize that it's not an either or choice where you can integrate the two. I know that you can take back control of your time. And I know that you can defy those accepted norms and truly follow what's in your heart. And that is the one thing that I want for you, that you follow what is in your heart. Until next time.